Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you can study for maths. You are a new year 11 student. You've been studying year seven to 10 and you probably fall into like one of two camps, right? There are students like me who were kind of studying their butt off from year seven. And I don't, I'm not gonna argue as to whether that's the appropriate way to approach high school or not. I think there's benefits to working hard the whole time and there are massive negatives to working hard the whole time. So I was kind of working hard from year seven So once I got to year 11, coming home and doing my extra, you know, homework and making flashcards and doing practice papers was not very new for me. And then there's the other group of students who maybe are a bit smarter and um, in terms of like balancing up how worthwhile studying is and spend year 7 to 10 not working as hard. Um, But then when they get to year 11, they're kind of not experienced in this higher level studying or this higher frequency studying. So that was one benefit of me having been kind of academically focused from the start was that when I got to year 11, it wasn't a huge jump. But for a lot of students, it is. So I kind of want to give you guys some of my tips for how... Oh, jeez, guys. You know what January is like. Constantly tired despite getting the most sleep that I will all year. Um, So I want to kind of give you guys some tips as to how you can study for maths Um, whether you have been a frequent studier from year seven or from year eight or nine or 10 or whatever to now, or if you are not someone who's really been a big studier and you think that year 11 is kind of going to be your first big jump into that. All right. So the first tip is to start now. It becomes much less overwhelming the earlier that you do some groundwork. So it is January and you are attending a free lecture. So I have to think that you're at least putting some effort in. Um, Definitely more than I put in right before year 11 started. I was not going to lectures, though I did used to go to the Gaetan Oates lectures in high school. What I would recommend is not doing anything crazy, but just getting your head around what you're going to be learning. So you'll have a syllabus that you can print out. There's one page in the year 11 syllabus that is just like the little table of everything that you'll be learning. I think printing that out can be super helpful, keep you aware of what you have to cover. And you can kind of have that set up so you can like tick off the topics as you go through or put a little checkbox next to them of like, Um, finished in class, finished notes, finished practice test or something like that. So just preparing your materials, preparing your binder that you take to school, labeling your books if you use books, whatever it is that you think you need to kind of be prepared with um, to go into class, not completely scrambled in your head. That's the kind of groundwork I'm talking about. I'm not saying to start all the content. I'm just saying, get your head around, you know, what you might be learning about. Okay, keep a rule book. This is like super, super important. I'm just looking to see if I have, I don't think I have it here, but um, a rule book or a summary sheet book is what I would recommend. Now, some people like to have like a little notebook kind of this size that they take to class and they write like, you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared Pythagoras' theorem in their book at the end of class. What I prefer to do, <sighs> sorry guys, What I preferred to do was to um, just keep my maths book and I would do my notes and I would do my questions and I would do everything in my maths book. And then when we finish a topic, I would come home, I would get one A4 sheet of paper and I would turn that into a summary page. So I would write kind of the key points from that unit. So go through the syllabus, go through my textbook and go through my book from class and figure out what the notes were that were really important. And I would jot those down onto a summary sheet. And so by the end of year 12, for example, I had 10 summary sheets that covered the 10 chapters or the you know five main units or nine subunits or whatever it was. Okay, so figuring out what you need help with and targeting it. This might seem really obvious, but a lot of students have trouble prioritizing and listing things in order of what is the most important. So I remember one specific day in year 12 where I was sitting in the library after school and I had been struggling with bearings and I knew that I needed to revise bearings, which is from the um, bearings is from like the trig topic under measurement in year 12. You don't have to worry about that just yet. Don't worry. It does suck though. Um, But I was practicing something else called simultaneous linear equations. And I had really nailed those by that point. I was getting them all pretty much correct. 
And I remember I was sitting there doing simultaneous linear equations and almost enjoying it because I was getting this thing right over and over again. And I knew deep down that I had to do my bearings work. And what I was struggling with there was spending time on something that I already understood instead of targeting something that I knew I needed to do. And so that's kind of the mental battle that you'll have to kind of play is doing the work that you know you have to do despite the fact that it might not be the fun part or it might not be the part that you know you is going to come to you very easily so what i recommend for that is something called the traffic light system where you take you write down like all the units that you have to cover so you write down like networks measurement blah blah you put all the units you're covering and then you sort them by traffic lights so red is something that you are really struggling with if it was on the exam you would be not good you would be losing marks left right and center Orange is something that you are like, you know what, I guess I get like maybe 60% of the questions right, but I could definitely use some more work. And green is if I was sitting the exam tomorrow, I'm pretty confident I get the questions right. So you sort things by red, orange, green, and then your revision goes red, orange, green. So you target all of your red topics first, then all of your orange topics, and then your green topics for some extra kind of morale boost if they're that green. That's the traffic light system. That's something that I think is super helpful. Um, Know that there is always someone who can help you. First of all, your teachers are being paid to help you ask them questions. If you've got great teachers, that's great. So many students, whenever I say this, go, my teacher sucks, my teacher sucks, my teacher sucks. Now, that's not a, you know, determination for me to make. And often people do underestimate teachers and what they're capable of. But yes, there are, I'm sure, people who have some less than ideal teaching situations, depending on a million different factors if that is the case and you don't feel like that's the person that you can approach I would recommend a seeing if any of your peers understand they're the ones going through it with you maybe they understand it better than you do there are other teachers in the school you could potentially approach some schools have like I know mine had like a maths thing that you could go to at lunchtime like a maths study group or something I don't know what that looks like at other schools but generally there's hopefully something you can go to past students often come back and do tutoring so I tutored students for free at my high school once I left um and then outside of school you've got YouTube and ATAR notes and Ed Roll like you've got a million different things that you can go and use um there are also some kind of upcoming things with um ATAR notes that would be very very helpful for this in kind of the vein of um giving you specified content like revision so keep a look out for some announcements in that space but um there's always a million things that you can find and use you've also got tutors and tutoring you can go the paid model with um something like TutSmart, which runs um private tutoring sessions and also group tutoring depending on the subject and then you've also got ways that you can source free tutoring as well or something like this a free lecture there will always 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 be someone or something that can help you so if that first port of call isn't working for you please don't give up and please continue looking study with friends now this one comes with a massive asterisk on the end now look your friends are the only people that will truly 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 understand what it is like for you right like so this is my fourth year out I still like have a fairly good memory of like what year 12 was like and I feel like I can impart some some good advice but it's been four years since I was sitting you know the beginning of year 12 or about three and a half years since I sat those final exams so I don't remember it as crystal clear as someone who just finished would remember it and I'm definitely not experiencing it the same way that someone in year 11 or 12 is experiencing it so look for those people around you that understand what you're going through um, and can empathize with potentially the struggles you're having in class and see if studying with them could potentially be beneficial to the both of you however studying with friends often is a bit of a like black hole into doing absolutely no work and that's not always a bad thing if you need to book in a study session with your friends at the library in the holidays and you don't really get anything done and you just hang out that day honestly it's not the end of the world you need to hang out with friends you need to relax you need to in my opinion don't ever do anything on a friday night you've got the weekend so there definitely is time that you need breaks in fact you should be taking a lot of breaks so studying with friends yes can be very helpful but also if you feel like it's just going to be a waste of time be aware of that and if you accept that you go into it anyway 
And that's what I did all of the time. Um, but there's definitely some friends you can study with really well and you can't study with at all. I had um, a friend who we would, because um, I was in year 12 in 2020, which was obviously the first year of COVID, um, we would set up FaceTime with each other and would just like mute ourselves and just sit there and work. So we could see each other and, you know, sometimes we'd distract each other and like get off mute and talk for a bit. But we could at least see each other and there was just someone else sitting in my room studying with me. And I found it quite helpful. All right, take care of yourself. These next two years are going to be intense academically. Um, but if you neglect your physical and mental health, they are going to be much more intense than you imagined. So looking after yourself, um, making sure that you have physical ways that you can exert your energy. I was training Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the time. So two or three afternoons a week, I was beating up my brothers. Worked for me, you know, they annoy me. So going and basically going to a class where I got to, you know, do a little arm bar on them was quite fun. Um, I also worked, I was a um, children's swimming instructor. So I taught kids how to swim. That got shut down in um, 2020 um, around March or April. So that didn't continue throughout my entire HSE, but I was working it for about six months prior. Um, I had friends who were working in retail, friends who were working in cafes, friends who were doing netball and soccer and track and a million different things. Um, and if you don't have the ability or the time or the money or the effort to do those things, that's completely fine. But you definitely do need ways to get out of this space, right? Most people study in their rooms. I know my desk is in my bedroom. Um, and you can become very insular. So it's very important that you take that time that you aren't studying to obviously relax and do nothing and binge TV shows and eat and relax a million times over. But you also need to use that time to go for walks or do yoga or take a bath or meet up with friends or, you know, go for a run, whatever it is that works for you. I found that like yoga and stretching could be quite relaxing. Um, and also just being on FaceTime calls with friends. And I know when COVID started every morning for a while, we would get on and it'd be someone's job to run like a 15 minute little workout. So one of us would run like, you know, here's 15 minutes of like ab workouts we can do before we jump into homeroom. Um, we sound very motivated now that I'm looking back. We are nothing like that now, um, but life definitely changes. And I've never worked harder than I did in year 11 and 12. Uni is a breeze compared to year 11 and 12, in my opinion. Um,